You may remember about a month ago when I built the AV7 turret for the biggest Star Wars mock this channel has ever seen. And so far, there's not been much progress on that mock. I'm in the works of building an AAT, which you should see a video in about a week or two when I have that model finished. And then we'll start work on the actual base of the mock and add in all of the minifigures that I've already shown off to you. And if you haven't seen them videos, I'll try and leave as many of them as I can on the end screen so you can watch them after this one. You don't really need to watch them in order, but today we're going to be improving the AV7 turret because I made a short that has been watched over 1.2 million times by about 750,000 different viewers. So thank you all that have watched the short. And again, I can try and leave that on the end screen. I'm not sure how many videos it will allow me to leave, but I will pack it out with all the videos you need to see, or perhaps I can leave links in the description or the comment section. But just to put that into perspective, it's earning about 5,000 views a day. We should be here in a million by Christmas. So if you haven't watched it, I would appreciate if you took a minute out of your day to watch it. And it's been watched over seven months worth of watch time. That is a crazy number for any of you math magicians out there that do like the statistics. So I do enjoy keeping a track and seeing that number growing over time. But today we're going to be fixing the turret. It's a bit wonky. It just needs a bit of encouragement before we start working on the AAT. And the barrel for the AAT should be a lot easier because it's a lot thinner than this. But it's quite a thick boy and just needs that support. It needed more than one axle in the first place. There's a few comments that have suggested different techniques and I think I've cracked the code for how we're going to make it as secure as we can. So I'm going to take it to the desk, run it through you with you, why I'm improving it, what I'm doing and some of the comments that were suggested and different ways that I can get them to work. So I hope you enjoy the video, sit back and relax and Let's get the AV7 turret back to the desk. So as you can see, right now the turret has been removed just so it wasn't warping over time. And there's a little sag in the build. When I place it down, you can see the legs do move a very slight bit, but that's all right because it's just the gaps in the ball joints. As we said in yesterday's video when I was doing the city and building the Jedi Temple for the city, Lego isn't perfect, so there is going to be a bit of give in these models but as long as it's not too much and it holds itself together that is completely fine by me i have a few different pieces we'll get to in a minute including this blaster element which is really really cool i haven't used it enough so we're definitely going to be trying to implement that in this design somehow but this is the turret that was in question it was very bendy you could in fact just bend it you can see here this is how much bend it had in it so you can see after a while it was really starting to sag. But I have implemented one of the comments already in here. First off, we'll put it in this orientation just so you can see how much it was sagging. So this is probably about as straight as it can get. And then when I let go, it does drop about a centimeter at the end, between a centimeter and about a centimeter and a half. I think I measured it and over time, it was only really sagging about a centimeter when I left it for prolonged periods. And that is because there is, there must be three axles holding up this whole thing. We've got about an axle in this portion somewhere. We've got one in here and then one at the end as well. I'll try and keep the full thing in frame for you, but as you can see, it's pretty long. Let me go grab the AAT Lego set, which I'm using to try and beef up the bigger AAT. And you can see these are meant to be the same size models. So the AV7 cannon we got ages ago with some Wolfpack Troopers was about the size of this, maybe a little taller, but this is a roughly eight times as big as that set. And that means it's gonna need a lot, a lot more of support. So one of the comments that was recommended to me and what I could do to improve it is a little technique that just means I need to put some bars. Here we go. You can see some in here, some bar elements in some of these pieces. Now, the reason they recommended bar elements and not axles or pins is because they clearly knew what pieces I was using or perhaps watch the video. These giant wheel elements only have space for bars in them, which does complicate this model a little bit when you're trying to increase the strength because these bars are only so strong and can easily bend and snap. But as they're reinforcing the axle, the axle's taking the most weight. And then we've got some bars in the end. It did actually work 
pretty well and sufficed for quite a while but I did notice again after some long term of it being in there it was starting to sag let's get the bars on top and you can see that even with the bars in them when I let go it sags a little bit I think this point here sagged two three millimeters but it was still sagging and we want to completely get rid of that so I can leave this on my shelf for months and not have to worry about the Technic axle snapping or any of these pieces breaking over time. It's bad enough that the legs tend to pop out whenever I put a lot of force on the top. We wanna make the actual turret of this as sturdy as we can so we don't have to worry about these legs. And I'm gonna to get to the legs in a second because I have done something to fix the legs, but the main purpose of this video is improving the turret. So I think the big thing that needs to change with this turret is removing these wheels. As I said, I put the bars in, it didn't fix it as much as I wanted to, and they are quite problematic for just going forward with this model. Only being able to use bars, we're definitely gonna have to get rid of them. And I come across this element for when I was taking apart the Bad Batch shuttle, I think it was. There's a lot of sand blue, but the sand blue don't work for the AV7. I wanna keep it mostly light gray with some dark gray in there. But this piece does have not only some axle holes, top and bottom, but also some pin holes. So this can really hold up anything, but I'm hoping this will be able to catch the axles I'm throwing everywhere. This will be able to hold some axles in it and this will definitely increase the structure and make the turret be able to support its own weight without having to bend. With one axle, it's very easy to bend them. But even if we just put in a second axle for now, and again, there will be a third one running through the middle still. I'm not planning on taking that apart. It becomes very hard, almost impossible. These axles are a bit shorter than the red ones. So I think they're a bit harder to bend anyway, but this is almost impossible to bend when there's two, let alone three of them. Hopefully it will stand the test of time. Only time will tell. And if this is still a problem when we build the AAT, I think we're just gonna have to suffer through it for this mock. As you can see, I don't display it on my shelf with the Canon. Perhaps we can make a thinner Canon for display and then one that works short term for videos and when I'm showcasing it to all of you. But when it's on display, we'll just have a thinner Technic beam out and Hopefully I can stop throwing these pieces. And I'm not quite sure exactly how we are going to replace these elements because it's been put together, like I said, with a few different length axles. First off, we can take the bars straight out, but that's also why I wanna capture this on video because there's no real way we can go about this. There's no pattern to it because we are gonna to have to replace these bigger wheels, perhaps with some more of these smaller dark bluish gray ones because they do have the pin holes in them and if we do decide we want to use pins instead they would work just as well but the first thing we want to do is fill up this side that will be going onto the AV7 cannon so this should be pushed all the way in with only enough space to hold this and then we can start working on perhaps securing our first support in this gray piece and if we do need more of these i do have the sand blue ones but i'd rather just stick to this light bluish gray because it does fit the color scheme and i guess the only thing left to do now is connect them something that i did forget to mention and another comment said about this as well is connecting these pieces with some of the round pins and i think they're called pin connectors again i'm not very well versed on the names of these technic elements but that will just secure them a bit more and that does definitely help there's less wiggle but the pins themselves do have a little bit of wiggle so somewhere like here we can definitely include them as well as the axles but as the axles are in that vertical orientation this is just really stopping any of the connectors swaying to the left or right. So for stability purposes, I am gonna still keep this in, but it doesn't really affect the model as much now that they are on their side. But it's definitely something I consider to try and stop them from bending. But like I said, these giant wheel pieces only have enough space for a little bar to go through them. So 
it wasn't that helpful when I was trying to put this together. Now what I'm doing to the end of the turret here, because I do want to connect this stud blaster, is I have to swap out the bricks. They are too big. If I can show you front on, the brick does cover most of the stud blaster. So we're not going to want that in front. What I'm going to try and do is see if I have any more of these wheels, these smaller Technic wheels to put in front because they are the same size as the activating mechanism and the studs should still be able to fire off with that lined in front. And it keeps a similar style to the barrel getting thinner as it goes on. And then we're also gonna have to add this small Technic piece from earlier just to create the right distance between the ends so that there's no gaps between the stoppers at either side. And thankfully, I've got a full draw to look through and I can see at the front, there are quite a few of the pieces we need. I didn't think before I was collecting them to see how many we would actually need because I think I've collected too many and four looks to be enough. I do have an extra one in my hand if needed. I think even four might be too many. I suppose they might not adhere to the same rules as all the other pieces. So I'm gonna try it without the small Technic piece. I really need to get the numbers of how wired all these elements are. It'd make it so much easier, but sometimes Lego just isn't meant to be calculated and you just have to test a few different things till you find the one that works. And there we go, we have it so that this blaster is actually connected to the axle. These wheels are loose, but the inside of this blaster is, I don't know if you can see that little gap in there, but as I rotate the axle, the gap does move with it. And that is because that is the mechanism for firing these studs. I think, I think we'll get a few studs now. Very often I usually leave these things to the end and they don't pan out exactly how I want them to. So I'm gonna get a few studs and test it. I've gone with this nice trans green, which if you don't know, green is my favorite color, so it makes sense. And the first test is whether we're gonna be able to put studs on here in the first place, which it looks like it's gonna be a problem. They don't fit on top. So it's a good thing we tested it now because we're not gonna be able to use these wheels. And I guess we're just gonna to have to settle for some smaller pin connectors. So I'm gonna keep this tiny thing on there just in case it is needed. And these are much smaller than the wheel elements. In fact, they're pretty much just not far off the size of the axle. Obviously they do go over the axle, but you can see they're that inner wheel of the wheel. I'm not sure how well all of this is coming across on camera, but let's stack a few of these up and test the stud launcher. And there we go. We have our first stud loaded in. The question is, whether we'll be able to get it to fire or not, because I'm not sure if this little gap is going to affect them as much as I would like it not to, but by twisting it, you can see it fires out off my thumb into the tub. That is some sort of Lego trick shot there. I don't think you fully saw that in the camera, but it does indeed work. You can put the stud in fairly easily and then twist to fire, and that adds a play feature to our model that might not necessarily find as many uses as you would like, but it's something fun that if you do want to build this yourself, the instructions will be updated on the Discord. The instructions for the main model are already there, so perhaps I'll just update this turret and add them as separate instructions. It's definitely a fun piece if you own this blaster. And as we are using the blaster element, which we can lock in place, I'm not entirely sure how we're going to get this to work because we don't want to lock the actual blaster in place but that does mean we will have to remove actually these were on a different path to the axle so i guess we could keep these in i do hope to some point in the future be able to live stream this sort of content because i feel like clipping it up for a video you are missing some things that you might find interesting and a live stream you can just skip through whenever you like and go to the parts that you think are important. So sometime in the future, I do hope to make that possible, but right now we've just got to settle for these videos. So the big problem at the minute is trying to get this blaster to spin. And the reason is because these Technic beams 
are somewhat in the way. I think we could probably push these ones back a bit further and get it just to sit in front. That might do the trick. And there we go, a simple problem with a simple fix. And you can see the blaster is now spinning. And you might also be able to notice when I put this down, it's only wobbling because this back bit is wobbling. And that is it, there is no extra give to this. So we might have already solved our problem, but I would like to cover up some of the gaps, especially at the front here. I'm not sure what element we've got to cover that. Or perhaps we don't even need an element because I've spoken a bit about these connectors. And if we fill that, it would look like a bunch of different wires. That could actually look really cool. So I think I'm gonna stick with the mostly gray color scheme and also get a few for that axle on top and bottom and we only actually have to connect these with one pin because we won't be able to connect them to this piece that's stabilizing them so i'm going to connect them into there and because the support is running the whole way through it should be enough to hold it up but that does mean we're going to have to take the whole turret apart and try to do this as easily as possible going for this first piece and there we go we've covered the axles on this right piece We've got our extra barrels on the left and by slotting that in, hopefully we can get it to hook on to the red axle without it going in any further. And that covers it up really, really nicely actually. And then we can get two of these in here to cover that bit. I'm gonna have a look, see if I have any more of these gray pieces because these would be quite good. The axle does slot through the top, providing the support. Perhaps every so often we can have one of these in there just to keep that lighter gray color scheme and i like the way now the turret isn't just a tube where these are hooked in we've got different bits coming in and out and it's starting to come together it seems that i only have this one in light gray the rest are in dark bluish gray and these are much easier to work with so i'm going to stick with them but if need be i do have a few different sized wheels that i can use i've just realized I'm actually holding two of these in light bluish gray. It looks like we have two of these. I forgot to check my other hand. That's a classic rookie mistake. And I don't know how we're gonna cover up this side. It might have to be the same as the first side. So if we can get two of these in there or perhaps one of these in there, I'm not quite sure how it's gonna hold itself compared to the other two. So I might have to get a few more of them little Technic pieces, but we could get these in here here and then perhaps something like this and then we can repeat the same design that we used right at the start further along and that's going to look really cool. I don't know what Technic set I got all of these elements from but I'm really starting to appreciate it more with this mock. And whilst I am putting these together this would probably be the part in the live stream where you could ask questions get them answered in real time which was brought up in a previous Q and A, which I think is a really good idea because you could just pop into a live stream, perhaps you're not interested even in what's being built, ask a question, get an answer, and not have to wait months for the questions to stack up enough for me to do a Q and A. So I do look forward to it and hopefully in the next couple of years likely, we will have the space to be able to set up a camera and stream a lot more often. Well, start streaming at this point. And here we have the Technic Stoppers. I think they're called Technic Stoppers. I'm gonna call them Technic Stoppers. I actually pair them with the older style Flick Fire missiles, which I have an abundance of. And I actually just stacked a bunch of these, I think it was, for the Y-Wing engines when I made that. Lego need to release another Y-Wing set so I can build a better model than just trying to use five Captain Rex Y-Wings. And we've got all our elements we could need, hopefully all of them that we need. It's just time to put it together. I think what's really cool about this turret is that it now lines up to the barrels at the front here. There is a little bit of wiggle room and I think it is this blaster element that is creating that wiggle room because there's no wiggle room in anything else along the shaft here. I mean, there's a few elements that do spin a little bit, but that is good enough for me, but this does have a bit of wiggle room in, which can be a little annoying. I guess what we could do to fix that is first off, break the model, which if you didn't know, you do have to break models in order to fix them. But we could add a little 
stopper on the end here, which is gonna make the connection a lot weaker than I'd like it to be, but as it's only holding on these two connector elements, it's not really gonna be a problem and we'll just stop that little bit of wiggle in the turret. Now you've basically seen this thing built, but I will be uploading instructions on to the Discord for channel members, but hopefully there are enough shots for you to see how it's been put together. It also makes it a bit wider than perhaps minifigure scale, because this thing was pretty much exactly minifigure scale. But again, if you want to check out the scale and see if this does line up, I'll leave the other video on the end screen. Let's first clear all of these tubs off the desk, put the legs back on and take a look at the final model. I've only just realized now, and it's probably something I should have looked at when I originally got the color, but I don't remember ever seeing an AV-7 cannon actually firing in Clone Wars. We definitely saw a lot of them, but I don't know what color their ammo or their lasers are meant to be. So if you do know, or perhaps you've just watched the Clone Wars and remember an episode where you see them firing, definitely let me know down in the comments. But for now, I think green will definitely do. It tends to be a bit more of a blue and red combination for clones versus droids. So I guess green is meeting them somewhere in the middle. It's a bit like lightsaber color. We'll just add a new one whenever we feel like it, as long as we can get the last bullet in. You can just about get six in, and it's quite nice because the little tip that will fire the bullets, or the studs in this case, is on the bottom. So the studs will fire underneath. They won't hit the top here or hit my thumb when I try to fire them, and I'll leave that for the very end. But we finally got a sturdy AV-7 cannon, and I think it looks pretty cool. And I admit I say that a lot. I talk about the LEGO City looking pretty cool. Every time I build something, it looks pretty cool. But it's not quite awesome. What stops this from being awesome, I think, is not only those legs, which, as I said, there's a base we'll look at in just a second, but also the fact that the AV-7 turret is quite simple. There's not much plate into it, and it's because I've taken it straight from the first Clone Wars movie. Perhaps it shows up later in Clone Wars, I have to do a bit of research, and it looks a bit more detailed because the animation style did definitely improve heavily from that movie to the rest of the show. And I probably should have taken a few screenshots from then or other creations that people have built. Even the Lego model was a little more detailed than the images I used. And I think there were some wires as well coming up the back. So perhaps I can revisit this one day and improve upon the model. But for now, it's good enough for the mock. It looks straight out of the Clone Wars movie. And let me show you the display I built to solve the issue with those wobbly legs. Right here, we have the Lego version from the 501st Specialist Battle Pack. And right behind it, we have my mock, which is minifigure scale to a 1 to 45 scale, which matches up with the clone trooper being 180 centimeters tall, which matches up to Django Fett's height as well, which works really well for any clone build or even most of the droid builds. I think the new droidica minifigure, which doesn't look as good as my own version, but that also isn't far off minifigure scale, being about two meters tall at one to 45. But to hold this up, we have some slopes down here and you can see round the feet, we've got a two by three, and a two by two, which creates this angled square. If I was to raise it out for just a second, you can see it creates an almost 2.3 by 3.4, something like that. I'm gonna calculate the maths now and whack it on screen just for anyone that wants to know, but it creates an angle big enough for the feet to go. And the feet can actually open. They're not gonna be this tall when the mock is built. The feet aren't gonna be sunk into the base, but it's just to note that it's gonna be about this high. I want to make this a mills plate as well to match up with the border around the front. And I'm just gonna have those four plates around the edge to create somewhere for all four of the feet to stick in. So I'm really liking how this is coming across. This is gonna be the size of the mock. So it does take up, well, it takes up over half if you include the turret, but it takes up about a third of the base plate. So there's gonna be a lot of clones running around underneath and a few different scenes depicted around it. It's gonna be plonked on top and 
I'm very intrigued to see how I work that backdrop because I definitely don't have enough bricks now and this is going to be a very long project. So I'm expecting to continue this throughout the year, definitely over the next month or two. As, as I said at the start, we've already been working on this a month and we've just got the AV7 turret finished. If you can think of any other improvements, do let me know in the comments. I probably won't revisit them before I finish the mock because I still need to work on the AAT, which again, I have finished in about a week or two. So make sure you are subscribed and drop a like on the video if you are enjoying this style of content. And then we'll start work on the base, on the backdrop, perhaps build up some of these sides as well and get a full on Clone Wars battle in the middle. We definitely won't be needing this anytime soon. So thank you so much for watching. If you are enjoying, I would appreciate a like and make sure you check out the other videos on your screen. Now, may the bricks be with you always.